Good afternoon. I'm Harrison Silcox. Thank you for joining us on the ISC Sports Network for some Marion's women's lacrosse action. I'm joined by Rachel France and what's turned out to be a chilly but beautiful afternoon, Rachel. Yeah, grateful for the sun here, hoping to give a little bit of warmth to the players on the field, but I'm sure they'll be moving enough to warm up for themselves. <laughs> Well, let's take a look at our two teams today. The Knights coming to this one ranked ninth in the country. They're four and three in the season. They've won their last two games against Concordia and Madonna. Uh, we'll touch on their scoring depth as well. There's a team that knows how to score the ball on the other side. Uh, Siena Heights, the Saints, they're three and three on the season, but coming off a win against Anderson, uh, 13 to one was the final there. Their head coach, Alex Mata for the Knights. It's Ali Stork Sneed. And so let's start to break down these teams. Rachel, I mentioned the scoring depth of Mary and the first two players that are going to jump out when you look at this team statistically that's uh, going to be Katie Murphy uh, who came in from Butler and then also Ella Grace Geed a nice balance of experience and youth between both those players who know how to rack up the points oh absolutely and I think what's unique is like experience yes Katie has been around a lot longer for the game right she has a career at Butler under her mm -hmm. belt transferring into Marion whereas Ella Grace is still on the younger side of that but they have this connection like they're able to find each other really well and assist each other work work into some like positional assists for other players on the field and that has been crucial for getting a lot of players on the board this year and you mentioned a lot of players on the board this year uh, a lot of players for the Knights can put the ball in the back of the net team that brings back for their top five scores from a year ago um, and then they add Katie Murphy to that mix so what kind of advantage does that give a team to have the scoring depth that they do where they've got you know four or five maybe six even seven different players who yeah. can impact the offensive side of the ball I mean uh, as an opponent you would look to lock down key players right but when there are six of them that makes it really hard to take that many defenders out of the actual play and and lock in on those players and I think that that's crucial. Then you have some backups. You have a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, um, as opposed to just maybe a plan A and B for your top two. And for the Saints, they're kind of a little bit of the opposite side in terms yeah. of experience. A lot of youth uh, on that Saints side of the field. So what are kind of some of the pros and cons if you're a coaching staff, if you're head coach Alexa Mata, and you're just approaching this season, these games on the road, mm -hmm. uh, and you're bringing a squad that has talent, but they're also on the younger side. So what kind of, you know, what's some of the good and bad in that? I think it's hard. Like you want to encourage them and say like, hey, you got to you got to play like your seniors here. <laughs> you got to play like you already have the experience. You deserve to be here. You're ready. You're prepared. Um, but it's also looking forward to the future and saying, look what we can become, mm -hmm. right? We are, we have this much strength as a young program with a lot of freshmen, sophomores on our team. We're just going to add to that depth as we grow and you gain experience. I think uh, Alex Mata has got to be very excited for the next few years ahead and just what they can accomplish this season as a young team. And you talk about young players and the potential for their careers to really pan out in the future. Mm -hmm. One player that stands out for them, Jenna Alley, just a sophomore, uh, but she leads the WAC in free positions earned, free position goals as well. Uh, she's 9 of 17 when she can get to the 8 meter fan this season. Oh, yeah. uh, so, what uh, kind of challenges can that put on the team defensively when you have a player who just knows how to get mm -hmm. really good looks on cage? It's mental, right? You think, mm -hmm. okay, I want to, I, I have to put body pressure on this player. She is a strong attacker. She's going to be getting in here. I need to make sure I have good body position. But you kind of get in your head about, okay, where's my stick? I got to make sure this is really clean. I don't want to give her enough space that she has a shot, but I also don't want to get a foul because she's going to get put on the eight and she's going to make this shot or potentially make this shot. Um, so I think the def defenders on Marion have to remain very poised and very calm um, as they attempt to shut down some of um, Sienna Heights' top players today. So when you look at these two teams, what do you think something that could be a, a really big differentiator uh, in today's game? Um, there's some big lacrosse statistics out there, turnovers, how well do you take care of the oh, ball, yeah. ground balls, you know, that, that helps her in possessions, also draw control. So when you just kind of look at everything statistically, what do you think is going to be a, a key factor when you look at these two teams? Transitions. Transitions are going to be huge. I know Sienna Heights tends to swarm to ball, which is a tactic that puts a lot of pressure on the ball carrier of the other team. So Marion, again, is going to have to remain very poised in that, um, whereas Sienna Heights is going to have to remember that they have a lot of experience on the Marion team. Their, expo their opponents have a lot of experience and are, are capable of making those turnovers just because they've had more time to refine that skill. All right, and we will have the opening quarter after this. Marion Women's Lacrosse on the ISC Sports Network. 
At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. Does your school offer high quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith-based environment focused on college and career exploration. Here at Marion University Preparatory School, we empower parents and help students to master what they love and learn as they live. We are now enrolling students in grades six through nine this fall. Full financial aid packages are still available. Act now to make MU Prep your school for 2022. Welcome back. I'm Harrison Silcox, Rachel France, alongside me in the press box for what we hope is an exciting game today between the Saints who are visiting the Marion Knights in Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, we didn't get a, a chance to touch on the two head coaches here, but uh, Ali Stork Sneed uh, for the Knights and Alexa Mata for the Saints. Two coaches who uh, have about a similar amount of time that they've been with these programs, leading these programs. Uh, for Sneed, last year, 13-5 uh, and five record, uh, one of the best records in program history. Uh, and then you've got Mata, who's, you know, it's her earlier years with the program, made some appearances in the national tournament uh, and and is kind of trying to rebuild that as well. Last couple of years, not exactly where they were at the beginning, but two coaches that are very experienced, Rachel. Oh, absolutely. I think I think their playing experience showcased in these matches as well and in their in their teams and their coaching staff these are two head coaches that know what they're talking about which is really awesome to see um, these women empowering other young women uh, as they take the field so we'll have the opening draw here in just a few moments and we will be underway So the opening draw control going to Sienna Heights. Marion putting a lot of pressure in transition, though. Sienna Heights maintaining the ball. And they're going to wind up turning it over in transition. It's Katie Murphy who was there to get a stick in the ball. And so it's Marion is going to set up with the first offensive possession of the day. It's Mason on the far side of the field. And it goes right back into her stick. Yeah, Marion slowing the ball down here, kind of catching their breath. I know st starting draw jitters are a very real <laughs> thing. <laughs> starting possession here, very real thing. Um, so I'm sure they're just catching their breath, getting everything ready to go here. And you mentioned a chance for the Knights to settle into the possession here with 50 seconds on the shot clock. That's Katie Gray moves it back behind the goal. Here's Murphy. It's the right-handed shot off. That'll be the first save of the day. It's Lucy Stedham who's in net for the Saints. But a tough throw on the clear. Marion's got a chance to pick up a loose ball. And they'll do just that. So Knights now back on the clear the other way. The Knights really looking to move that ball quickly in their defensive end. I know they do not want the ball in that region. Yeah, you talk about that pressure from the Saints. You're seeing it there as the turnover is forced at midfield. And so teams exchanging possession here in transition. It becomes just a possession game in the midfield at this point. 
But the shot clock is running here for Siena Heights. So they are definitely looking to get it over into their offensive third, which they do. So they're able to get in their attacking zone. Just over 12 and a half minutes left to play in the first. It feed inside. Winds up deflecting off the stick of Dumphy down on the turf. And so here comes Marion in transition. They do have some numbers here. This is Geed with the ball. We've got a 3v2. Trying to find Mason inside. Could not connect on the pass. So that's a turnover and what would have been a good opportunity to score there for Marion. This is Porchetta up in the near side of the field. As pressure comes, she tries to toss out of it. And into the middle of the field. And plenty of players there. It's Haley Irvin who comes away with the ground ball. So Ashlyn Gray finishes off the clear. Loaded ahead to Murphy. Still looking for our first goal here early in this one. Knights scoring just under 13 a game here on the season. Looks like the Saints are playing a pretty strict man-v-man -man defense here too. They're not taking risks by exposing openings in the eight by coming out and putting pressure yet. I think that's a smart move, kind of size up your opponent, <laughs> take a breath. And we were talking before the game, Rachel, this might be the first real scoring opportunity, and it is. It's Kate Gray who gets on the board first today as the Knights take the one-goal lead advantage. And, Rachel, right in the middle of that, I was asking you, we were talking about how Marion likes to move the ball offensively, a lot of assisted goals. Uh, that one, though, just a solo effort from Kate Gray to get to the net. Yeah, a beautiful left-handed shot. You'll see she switched got around that defender, two defenders, in order to get a clear shot off there. They move the ball quickly, they find each other quickly, which is definitely um, showcased by their coaching experience. They're able to teach them, hey, you gotta keep your heads up, even when you're high pressure, uh, maybe the adrenaline's pumping, you have to be looking for those opportunities. So we return to the draw circle, just over 11 minutes left to end the first night's strike first. Got a holding call in the midfield there, but that's not a green card because it's not a physical foul. Well, the card go or the call, pardon me, goes against Sienna Heights, so it's another possession here for Marion. A chance to score the opening two goals of this contest as Greed walks the ball back along goal line extended. Great feet in front, and it's back-to-back -back goals for Kate Gray. So Gray, she had two goals on the year coming into this one. Two early goals makes it four on the season for her now. And uh, Rachel, that time it was off a of feed, a good off-ball cut. Yeah, that was gorgeous. And you'll notice Ella Grace was able to find her quickly, and I think that, was, that looked like another lefty goal from Kate Gray there, which is awesome. Is she a natural lefty? Do you know? No, she, she is, is not, not a natural that, lefty. That is a v <laughs> if you're out there watching and, and you're a young lacrosse player, use both hands. It comes in handy. <laughs> Defend <laughs> defenders will try to shut down your dominant hand, so you got to be ready to pull out plan B. <laughs> well, if you want to score goals, it pays off, mm -hmm. and we go back to the draw circle again. It's Madeline Dumpke in there for the Knights. is a call again going against the Saints. Looks like that was a false start on the draw. I'm not sure if that was the draw taker or one of the players on the circle. Sienna Heights playing really good body defense. And this, I believe, is going to be our first free position look of the day. It's going to go in favor of the Knights. It's Tori Farkas. Lining up for a big power shot there. And she'll shoot. That's going to be a save made by Stedham. Ground ball still alive, though. Knights are going to pick it up. They'll keep it on this end of the field. New shot clock as well. Fantastic save from the Siena Heights goalie as well. 
those power shots are really hard to track, especially from that distance. But she was able to get, get a piece of it. Knights came to this one 31% on their free position looks. Lucy Stedham in goal is the difference there. Here with about 40 seconds on the shot clock. Knights still with the ball already lead by two. It's Ashlyn Gray, who was working inside, now in front of the goal. Shot is off. It might have been deflected. It was Farkas who got there with a good look. Murphy's going to keep the possession alive. Good defense from the Saints to close in the angle off there. 20 seconds on the shot clock. The shot goes wide on a feed inside. You could tell they had a sense of urgency with that shot clock ticking down. It's down to five. It's Murphy turns, shoots with the left hand. It goes over the goal, and its position or possession is going to expire. So good defense there from Sienna Heights. The Saints are not making this easy for the Knights' offense. So they Stedham, are making them work hard. Yeah, pressured immediately. As Turner will sprint upfield now, closely followed by Geed. Again, some great stick protection. Switching hands frequently, protecting the ball, cradling away from her defenders. So successful clear for the Saints as they'll try to get their first goal of the day in their opening, well, not the opening possession, but it's been a while since they've had the ball on this side of the field, Rachel. Yeah, their, their defense is very patient. I think they look to have the Knights or their opponent kind of wear out that shot clock and, and take the worst shot possible at the last minute. It's a smart tactic. This is Holland with the ball, the pressure, and it was knocked out of her stick, and I believe we had a whistle on a stop play. It's Madeline Dumpke who tried to force the turnover. Instead, the Saints will keep it. 20 to work with on the possession here. Catalano tried to look inside. The ball's just going to roll right over to Katie Joe. Tough pass on the clear, though, and... The Saints will try to keep the possession on this side of the field. Awkward handling the ground ball, but Kaylee Brown will reel it in at the far side of the field. So Ruby Mason full steam ahead. Talk about just quick early movement on that clear to avoid that pressure, Rachel. It's what you mentioned earlier in the game, and it turns into some transition offense. Ella Grace Geed on the board for the first time today. A gorgeous transition. Ella Grace was able to slip just behind that defender. Uh, Ruby Mason and Ella Grace played in high school together, so they actually have that little connection as well. They've, they've been able to be teammates for a lot longer, which I think is, is hugely beneficial for this young team. Well, these, these young players on this team. And it, you see it pay off there as the Knights in front by three early in this one. We'll step aside. Timeouts called by Sienna Heights. You're watching Marion's Women's Lacrosse on the ISC Sports Network. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. zero sugar this is the pepsi with zero compromises this is pepsi zero sugar welcome back to indianapolis indiana i'm harrison silcox with you this afternoon rachel france alongside me knights up three to nothing here's a timeout was called by sienna heights early in the first quarter broadcast today 
want to mention brought to you by AAA Roofing. When it rains, it pours. So trust the pros at AAA Roofing. That's who we call. Special thanks to AAA Roofing for their supports of Marion Athletics. And also Pepsi. Grab a Pepsi and some friends and get in the game. Pepsi, proud partner of the Marion University Knights. And Rachel, I'll tag you in here as uh, teams are just now breaking their huddles out of the timeout. It has been a good start for Marion. It's been a fantastic start. Honestly, I think for both teams, they've had pretty strong possessions, especially in that midfield transition. You'll notice the middle third of the field has seen a lot of play. <laughs> Usually teams want to get out of that region as quickly as possible and into their <laughs> offensive third. Um, but both teams are being really patient and finding quick, sharp passes in order to work up the field. I think both defensively, both teams are making each other work for this defense is putting pressure the Marion defense puts a lot of more pressure on which might not be something that the uh, the Saints are used to because their defense kind of sits back and waits for um, the offensive team to take the first step what's well, Dumpke and Alley at midfield once again for another draw control as the Saints will try to get something on the scoreboard here with about 706 left here in the first quarter So that draw control is going to go the Saints' way. Danielle Turner picking up the loose ball. It's back on the turf in the clear, but it's picked up by Catalano. She just zipped it back towards safety there. Yeah, so At one point, she had four people on her. That is where uh, speed can pay off in transition as you can just avoid the ride with your feet. So Whistle's going to stop play here. It's going to be a call against the Knights. This is Jenna Alley with the ball. Now right back to Alley. Three defenders on her. She finds the open player. Shot but a save by Katie Joe. Ground ball keeps it, though, with the Saints. Alley has it right back. And it looks like she might get put on the eight here. And that's exactly where she wants to be. That's where she spent most of the season here in the early going through six games. She's been here 17 times before. We'll see if the sophomore can cash in. And the bounce shot yes, will yes. go. A fantastic shot from sophomore Jenna Alley there. So that is her 20th goal on the season. As Sienna Heights cuts the deficit down to two with 545 left to play in the first quarter. Those eight meter shots can really, really change the momentum of a game. That as well, I mean, as good of an angle as it gets, uh, uh, yeah. would you say? Yeah, a fantastic hash to be on. <laughs> and she knows <laughs> how to use them. Like she knows how to use her body pr to protect her stick. She was quick off the line, and I think that's often a neglected piece of an eight meter. You have to be able to get a step on your defenders to get your stick free. She and did so a fantastic job. <laughs> Jenna Alley right back to work here in the draw circle. The Saints were able to get the last one. We'll see if they could get this one too. And it's gonna go the Knights way. Ashlyn Gray with the ground ball. A little give and go right back to Gray. She couldn't connect on the pass, so it's down to the turf, and it goes right near the safety of Stedham's stick. So the Saints on the clear is they try to continue to solve this Marion ride. Turner finishes off the clear. is Pringle. And right back to Alley. Tried to look inside. It was not there. Ground ball went in the direction of Katie Murphy, and she's off in transition. That Marion defense is a lot more pressure <laughs> than <laughs> I think the, the Saints defense is. It's got to be hard to adjust to that in the middle of a game 
having someone come straight at you <laughs> when you might not be expecting them to come put that pressure on you. That's Geed with the ball as it'll now be rotated around early in the possession here for the Knights. Trying to get one back after they let up the most recent goal. So a good stop defensively. Rachel, as you mentioned, that uh, pressure's been obvious. It's It's been tough uh, to find the open players for the Saints here early in this one. Where those looks are there, uh, I feel like just Marion's got those active sticks to disrupt the passing lanes. Absolutely. And I think that is that is hard when you play a really tight offense. And the Saints are playing an offense that's really, really tight in as well. That shot... Sailed just over the crossbar. 30 seconds left on the possession for Marion. Marion playing really wide here. They also have kind of a stack going on that outside elbow, that left side elbow. Looking to give those shooting opportunities. And That's we're going to get a call here. That's going to go against the Saints as Kate Gray was looking to make it a hat trick here in the first quarter. It's going to result in a free position look, and she could surpass what her goal total on this season was in the first quarter alone. As Gray shoots and scores, and it's a first quarter hat trick. In her fifth year, three goals. And the opening about 12 minutes here, it's 4-1, to one, Marion back in control. Fantastic free position shot taken there. Just hard to, hard to defend when you're a stick length behind. And you really, we're starting to see here in the last couple minutes just how valuable those free position looks can be. And the last two goals coming from that 8-meter fan uh, and... So that time, I mean, you have to credit, I feel like, Kate Gray. She took some contact on her way to the goal as well. Um, that was one that was most definitely earned through some physical contact. Oh, absolutely. And I think Jenna Alley's on the other end was, was the same thing. That physical contact, refs are really looking to keep players safe in that region because it gets chaotic. Sticks are moving. Girls are moving. There's a goalie involved. A lot of communication. Um, so that's their, the ref's ultimate um, goal <laughs> is to keep everybody safe. Well, good work by Holland there to win the battle of the box out to pick up the ground ball. And so Saints with possession, a chance to cut that deficit in half. As the feed from Pringle inside didn't go anywhere, Marion, their pressure defensively continuing to pay dividends. As Searcy running into some trouble in front of the substitution area winds up losing the ball, so... Chalk that one up as a failed clear. Good work on the ride from the Saints. Yeah, fantastic pressure. They had three on her. At that point, it's just really tough to see your passing opportunities. You have three bodies and three sticks in your way. Even if people are communicating, it's going to be really hard to get that clean pass off. So this is Pringle on the ground ball on the far side of the field. It went out of play, but referee says it's going to stay with the Saints. And uh, we're a looking at our card. first green card of the day as well. So uh, 60 seconds of the woman up coming up for the Saints. And uh, is it Ashlyn Gray who's going to be taking a knee, Rachel? Yeah, it looks like it. So any physical foul in that middle third of the area now is going to be a green card. So it's a, it's a woman up situation. Um, it's not as severe as a yellow card. They only have one minute to be woman up or woman down in that situation. Um, but again, really emphasizing the need for safety in this game um, as it becomes more physical as the years go on and the game gets faster. There are going to be more of those physical fouls. So um, refs are really looking to keep that play as clean as possible. Well, first woman up opportunity today for the Saints. A great look inside, an even better save from Katie Joe on the doorstep. It was Androwski. The looks don't get much better than that. And somehow Katie Joe is able to keep that one from crossing the goal line. But now the other half of the battle is trying to clear it when you're down a player. Oh, yeah. Especially when people can put pressure on the goalie. I mean, that fantastic save from Katie Joe and a great look from Sienna Heights. As that ball's checked out of Brown's stick. The ground ball's going to roll to the near side. Kept in play by Androwski.
You'll see Marion kind of shifting to a lot less pressure on this defense with their woman down situation, but it looks like they're going to be full strength right now. And back to even strength. The pass is going to leak through, and Marion's going to come away with ground ball. Madeline Dunkey with the active stick there, and she'll turn around up the field on the clear. As Dunkey's tripped up, and we'll see what call That's this winds up being as the official reaches into his pocket, and it's a yellow card this time around. That motion, that hand motion from the ref is for a slash. So anytime there is an uncontrolled check in what the refs think is an uncontrolled check, um, that's going to be a two-minute penalty for number two there, Jenna Alley. So yes, now it's Alley who's going to sit out for a couple of minutes. So it was a woman of opportunity for the Saints. Weren't able to capitalize. Knights are going to get two minutes with a player advantage on their end of the field. Still work to do left in the clear here, but... A uh, tough break there for the Saints to have that woman of opportunity. And they had a really good look on Cage as well. Katie Joe denying a shot right in front of her. Um, and then now they're going to go a player down here for the next couple of minutes. So it's Bozeman trying to navigate through some traffic. She'll do just that. And successful clear. Marion with the ball on offense and an extra player as well. It's always fun to see what a team will do in those woman up situations. If they try to get a fast break, if they try to slow it down and really work the de defense into making a choice. It looks like that's what they're trying to do. As Gray gets the shot off, it's another save by Stedham. Ground ball, though, is going to be kept with Marion. Bit unsettled here. It's Bozeman who worked inside and wound up losing the ball, and Stedham's going to have it back in her stick. So a little bit of a chaotic possession there, but the Saints did a good job as the first quarter expires to keep it at only four goals allowed in the first frame. We'll have the second quarter after this on the ISC Sports Network. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense, and investing in you makes good sense to us. Welcome back to Marion University. Harrison Silcox with you this afternoon. Rachel France with me as well from the press box. Would like to thank BSN, the preferred provider of apparel for Marion Knights Athletics. Also, thank you to Indiana Members Credit Union. Indiana Members Credit Union is proud to support Marion University and now offers a Marion University Knights debit card. The card's included when you open a free IMCU checking account. Get your Marion University Knights debit card today to show your support. Visit any IMCU branch or sign up online now at imcu.com. But also, Tom O'Brien Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. If saving money is important to you, visit Tom O'Brien Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, a proud sponsor of Marion Athletics. Tom O'Brien's Indy's preferred Jeep dealer with two locations in the biggest Jeep inventory in Indiana. To show our support, Tom O'Brien will donate $200 to Marion for every car any student, parent, employee, or friend of Marion buys. When you mention the promo, go Knights and go to Tom O'Brien to see how our family works for you since 1933. So Rachel getting ready for the second quarter of play. And uh, for Marion, that's about as good of a start as she could have. Absolutely. To have a hat trick to start off the quarter also has got to build confidence <laughs> in Kate Gray, um, but also in her teammates knowing, OK, if she can do it, I can do it, too. I'm going to continue to find her. She's going to continue to find me and we're going to put goals in the back of the net. It was the Knights who scored the first three of this contest. Jenna Alley got the Saints on the board 
And then you mentioned Kate Gray. She finished off that hat trick with the fourth goal at the opening quarter for the Knights. Is a call here out of the draw circle is going to give Marion possession. It looked like that was alternating possession. So there must have been a foul on both uh, teams, which either means both draw takers moved a little bit too early or potentially two players on the circle entered a little bit early. Um, in women's across, you have an alternating possession at the start of the game, and it looks like Marion um, won that in the coin toss. So that's going to be their possession um, when it's a 50-50 call. And Jenna Alley is still sitting out on the yellow card that we had late in the first quarter. As a good look inside for Mason there, but a stick check knocked it free. Ground ball, though, stays with Marion. As Newell tries to feed inside, finding Murphy, who's been quiet here in the early going. We're going to have a ground ball near the Saints' crease. As a whistle is going to stop play, and it's going to keep play with the Knights. So Looks it's like that was a push on Sienna Heights. I know it was a little bit of a funky ground ball situation. The ref pulled Tori Farkas back towards the uh, dot for possession. As Farkas tried to get it to Murphy. The Knights will keep 30 seconds left on the possession. This is Newell with the ball. You'll notice many of the Knights guarding that restraining line, making sure the ball stays on their offensive third. Another ground ball down in front, and it's going to be picked up by the Saints this time around. Audrey Scott was able to get there. Now she rolls out of some pressure. Lazaretti throwing forward, finding Androwski. Good ball movement on the clear for the Saints. It was a tough catch for Bo, and now it's picked up by Marion, and they're going the other way. Again, that three-person swarm down the midfield. It's a lot of pressure for one player to handle. Now Irvin's going to lose the ball on that near sideline. Androwski picking up the loose ball. Now it's picked off in transition by Dumpke. And now Farkas will settle things up just a little bit. So back and forth. This game's opening up a little bit here in the second. It's the Knights who still lead by three. It's still that transition game. It's going both ways. There are a lot of turnovers <laughs> in this transition game with both teams playing hard body defense in that middle third of the field. As you saw, Geed lose the ball there, and it's going to be a call that's going to go against Geed, I believe. And so you mentioned the turnovers. There's another one there. Sienna Heights is going to wind up with possession. It's Ava Lazaretti. Will start play, goes back to Stedham. And Stedham has been pressured all day in this clear, nearly lost it there, but Sophia Bowe is able to get the ball. She rolls away from that sideline. And it's another turnover in the clear. Getting a lot of contact. And yeah, that was Geed who was knocked to the turf. As play stopped again, Geed a little bit slow to get up as you I think see what happened here. And yeah, before the play, Mallory Miranda took a shot up high as well. Refs look like they're kind of deciding from all three angles, what did they see? What is the call going to be? The officials will have their discussion as we try to sort out here from the press box exactly what's happening down on the turf. But the Knights already lead by three. And I believe, yes, uh, official does have a yellow card out of his pocket. And it might be a question of how many yellow cards. So Audrey Scott is already taking a seat just to the right of her bench. And I believe Ava Lazaretti is also going to be taking a seat as well. So you talk about a, a chance to, you know, I just get really good looks on Cage. You take two players off the field defensively for the Saints. Oh, yeah. And then not to mention, you're going to have Geed in a free position here as well. 
And Lazaretti is one of their top defenders for the Saints with 14 ground balls and six cause turnovers before the start of this match as well. And a good look, but a good save from Stedham. Murphy comes away with the ground ball. And so Stedham able to keep that one out from between the pipes. That was a huge look for the Knights, just unable to come away with it. As this is a good look inside and a shot and a goal. And for the first time today, it's Katie Murphy who's on the board. Feet inside came from Talia Newell. Fantastic look from Talia to the inside. I think they were able to capitalize on that play. Just they have two extra players and they have to stretch the defenders out. You'll notice all of the Knights were playing high because um, they're not going to score from the back of the net. They don't necessarily need to feed from the back of the net. They can find each other a little bit easier from the, from the top in those such situations. So it's the Knights on top by four now as Murphy on the board for the first time today. It's 25 goals for the Butler transfer on the year now. Looks like one of those cards may have been releasable. Number 16 still serving. So it's Andre Scott card. who's still serving some time. So it was a non-releasable was one of those yellow cards, which means she's got to serve the full two minutes rather than that penalty just being up after a goal is scored. But what would go a long way in killing off the rest of that yellow card would be a draw control to win here for the Saints. As a stoppage in play from the officials going to give the ball to the Saints. It looked like they were going to lose it momentarily in the clear as Pringle did some nice work. She was on the draw and wound up winning possession as Geed is going to get called here and she might be hit with a uh, green card here. Looks like one minute of woman up play for the Saints. A fantastic call from the refs. Again, just keeping everybody safe, especially since there is no headgear or helmets <laughs> worn <laughs> in this game. <laughs> it was a heavy stick check from Geed that had the official pull the green card out of his pocket. So good work, a bit of tic-tac-toe passing, finishing off the clear for the Saints. As Sophia Bow will give it back to Turner. So really for the first time here in this second quarter, we'll see the Saints set up on offense. This is Jenna Alley. Surveying from up top as she rolls to her right. Dodges a couple stick checks in there before she floats it back outside. And now a stoppage in play. Looks like three seconds on the Knights. Is what it looks like his hand signal was. That's going to wind up being Kaylee Brown on that eight-meter fan. As she shoots, that shot might have been deflected on its way to the goal, and Marion coming away with the loose ball. Katie Joe with a bullet of a pass right into the stick of Gray, who turns and fires upfield. Marion still woman up for another few seconds here. So Mason will just carry the ball all the way back behind the goal. Now here's Geed finding some space inside, but a whistle stops play. Full strength again for the Saints. Impressive that they were able to get an eight-meter shot <laughs> just playing <laughs> 6v7 there. So this is Geed. Last time she was at this position on a free position, she opted to pass. We'll see what she does, what she does here once the whistle blows. And this time she does pass out to her left, and Murphy with the ball now. Puts the shoulder down, but loses it on the cradle. She'll keep possession. Just under 60 on the shot clock. This is great. Switches to the left hand, gets the oh. shot off. It was deflected right into the stick of Stedham. Good awareness from the Saints goalie. And they have that play on lock now. They know it's coming defensively. And a tough pass. It's going to be a turnover here on the clear for the Saints. It has been tough today for them in transition. And that's an unforced turnover there by Gray, who just lost it on the pass. We'll see if the Saints can capitalize. It's Turner here in transition. 
weaving through some sticks checks. Turner finally gets closed off as he, she shovels a pass back outside to Pringle. And it goes right back to Turner. That high pressure defense again from the Knights. You'll notice the Saints are pulling those defenders way, way out to the 20-yard line. This is Allie Pressure, and you mentioned all the way out to that 20-yard line. She'll try to sprint away from it, feed inside. Those active sticks have been there all day for the Knights, and here they come the other way. Great knockdown by Maddie Dumpke. We've got a 3v3 coming in. And Farkas with her head up, but right there to make the interception with Scott. Grabs the ground ball as well, so good heads-up play from the defender for the Saints. As that ground ball battle is going to go the Knights' way. Good work by Cersei, but she's going to lose it on the far side of the field. So relentless pressure from both teams here. Neither one is willing to give up once they lose the ball as Androwski will finish it off and get the possession for the Saints. And they could use a goal here trailing by four. Seven minutes left to play here in the first half. The Saints definitely taking a breath. Getting set up, especially after a hectic transition. Good look inside as that shot goes just wide from Bo. Fantastic quick ball movement on the offense from the Saints. Got a ball down in transition, and the Saints are going to be there. Lazaretti picking it up, and a bad pass forward will keep it with the Knights. As we've got, I believe, a timeout called on the field by the Saints, who trailed by four. We're back in a couple of minutes on the ISC Sports Network. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. This is the Pepsi for America's best barbecue. Worthy of 100 mile detours and a thousand likes. Looks good. This is the Pepsi for mopping, dipping, and dousing. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? Best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Marion University is like a home to me. Campus is where I made friends that I know will last a lifetime. Academics, sports, or arts, Marion's got something for you. Plus, downtown Indy is just 10 minutes away from campus. I'm a huge sports fan. Living in Indy, I've got the Knights, the Colts, and the Pacers. Applying was so fast and easy. I went to Marion for the education, but what I took away was the experience. Marion University offers an exceptional education and an unforgettable experience. Apply today for full scholarship consideration at marion.edu. Welcome back to Marion University where the Knights all smiles here about midway through the second quarter and a good reason for it. They lead 5-1. to one. A timeout was called by the Saints before we went to break. Our broadcast today brought to you by First On Sites, formerly More Restoration is here to help power you through whatever comes your way from fire and flood to catastrophic storms or biohazards. They have the team, technology, and resources to help you restore, rebuild, and rise. Go Knights! And also, Journey to 2030, Marion University Athletics is excited to launch their new strategic fundraising campaign to enhance the student-athlete experience across campus. Because of the generosity of several Marion donors, all new gifts or pledges between September 1st through April 2024 to athletic scholarship funds and the Facility Enhancement Fund will be matched up to $1 million to make your gift to support these efforts. Visit marion.edu slash journey to 2030. Additional information can be found at munites.com. So six minutes and 20 seconds left to play out of the timeouts here in the first half. It's Marion with the ball. And a four-goal lead on the scoreboard as well. 60 seconds on the possession. Rachel France with me up in the press box. And what's been a good day for Marion so far? Gorgeous weather for lacrosse. 
some fantastic play defensively and offensively. And between the pipes, both goalies have made some stellar saves. Well, this is Newell to her left. Is able to get the shot off and score. Good work on the isolation play there. It's 6-1, to one, Marion. That's five goals on the season now for Newell, the sophomore from right here in Indianapolis. You notice that switch of hands again. They've had a lot of lefty shots today. And you talk about just having the ability to, you know, off the dodge in both the men's and the women's game, how important it is to be able to use your off hands. That just makes you that much versatile of an attacking player when a defender's got to worry about, you know, your ability to go either left or right on the dodge, and, and it pays off there for Newell. Absolutely. Defensively, coaches teach you take something away. Take away their dominant hand or take away an angle. But you're not going to be able to take away both, especially when you have a strong attacker. It is Pringle and Dumpke at midfield. It's going to be alternating possession again. Both players moved early. So since Knights got it last time, the Saints will get it in the second round of alternating possession. So we'll see if Sienna Heights can cash in off the call from the draw circle as the battle for the loose ball here. It goes Sienna Heights way. This Androwski on the far side of the field, given right back to Turner. Real quick ball movement from the Saints there. That's and Holland a lot of pressure. Losing it out of a double team, but uh, whistle blown immediately after as Holland was knocked to the ground. And I believe that's going to be a call on Kate Gray. Not sure what the call is here. Looks like the refs are talking about. Could it possibly be, would it, would it be a clock issue? Was there supposed to be a, a shot clock reset there up to 89 seconds? Well, that's a good note. <laughs> Probably <laughs> not. I, I'm going to assume not, that's the correct thing. <laughs> uh, th that may be the discussion. Uh, obviously, we'll wait for any official signal. It's all three huddle up here, and now we've got one walking to the near sideline up to the scores table, and we'll see what. It is exactly that they need sorted out. Looks like they're keeping the 89 second shot clock. You can see the Saints kind of getting set up for just in case their teammate runs into some trouble here with this double team set up by the Knights. She has multiple options. She has a player to her right, a player to her left, and a player behind her just in case she needs to pass that ball. So Holland will have it here on the far side once play resumes. Mentioned a couple of those players. Bottom of the screen, Kaylee Brown is an outlet for her. And then all the way just at the top, top left of your screen, you can see Caitlin Catalano. Okay, they fixed that shot clock. We got 73 seconds on the shot clock for the Saints. Appreciate our officials getting that sorted out as we have just under 70 on the shot clock now. This is Pringle with the ball from up top as she'll survey and move to her left. It's Pringle around one defender. Can she body through another? But Marion closes it off well. No angle to get a shot off as Allie gets the ball back as she rolls away from some trouble to her right. Allie tried to split through a couple of defenders, could not, but I believe we might get a free position here. Looks like that was a shooting space call. Jenna another Allie those, with the ball. Another one of those calls that's uh, designed for the safety of the players is Allie will get a look on Cage here. She's already got one free position goal today. Could she make it two? That was deflected, I believe. If not, Katie Joe might have gotten a piece of the save and a call on the loose ball is going to go against Sienna Heights. So it's the Knights will set up on the clear. The shooting space call is a funky one. Definitely something new or something unique to the women's game. Um, for those who are still kind of learning, shooting space is when a defender will be in the line of um, shot for an attacker, that is a, actually a foul on the defender. You can't just stand in the way um, because you're putting your own self in, in danger. 
Um, so the attacker has to make sure that they don't shoot. If they shoot, it's a yellow card on them. Um, but if the defender gets in the way, directly in the line of the shot from an attacker, um, more than a stick length away, that is going to be a foul on the defense, which is why we got that free position set up for oh. Jenna Alley. So in between all of that, Lazaretti was given a yellow card. So back on the woman up here for a couple minutes, will go Marion already leading by five goals. Good job from Newell to finish off the clear. This is Gede trying to look inside. She gives back to Gray. Now Newell, the most recent goal scorer. Quick ball movement here from the Knights. You'll notice all the Knights also taking that pump fake first. They're also looking for that shooting space call. So Farkas to Newell. It goes right between her legs, but the ground ball will stay with Marion. The Saints playing very tight defense here, not wanting to give up any opportunities. Looks like another shooting space call. So free position coming up for Kate Gray. Gray's already got three goals on the afternoon. She works inside. Great stop from Stedham. She read it all the way. The quick outlet on the clear. This is Fuentes who gets the, uh, the finishing touch on the clear. As she passes back out to Kaylee Brown, who's pressured. And right back to Fuentes. So the Saints looking for their first goal since the first quarter as that shot sails just above the crossbar. It was good work from Danielle Turner to get into some space inside. Yeah, you see their attackers dealing with a lot of pressure on the inside, but still managing to get some really good looks on Cage. Got great ball control in their sticks um, despite having a lot of contact. This is Catalano from behind the goal. She tries to pass up high, and Murphy's going to come away with the ground ball. She'll slow things up in transition. This is Mason. Final minute and 45 seconds of the opening half is one that's been dominated by Marion. A very low scoring half, though, or quarter at least. We've seen two goals this quarter, both scored by the Knights. You had Katie Murphy, who got her first of the day, followed up by Talea Newell getting one as well. As uh, ground ball here is going to go the Saints' way. Bueller got underneath it, but she loses it immediately on the clear. So the Knights will keep and a new shot clock as well. So they can really, if they want to, be super patient and hold for the last shot of the quarter here, Rachel. Oh, absolutely. And I think they should. Less running. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of running this game. We were talking about that during the break, but Geed on the feet inside to Mason, who put a shot on Stedham, who stopped it, but a call from the official, and it's going to wind up being a free position for the Knights. Mason decides to pass out to her left, finds Gray. No shot there as Sienna Heights responded well. A lot of patience from the Knights here. And the Saints playing very tight defense. You'll notice nobody is unmarked. Everybody is within sticks length of their defender. That's or their attacker. who found Murphy. Got the shot off with the left hand. Not on target, though. Possession stays with Marion. 20 seconds left in the half now. Farkas to the middle of the field. She shoots. Stedham makes another save, but it's not before a whistle. No, no whistle from the official. That's good work from Stedham to make the stop. And she might just let this half run out. Down to five seconds left in the second quarter. Yeah, that's a tough hit here at the end of the second, says Porchetta was knocked to the ground. 
But on the scoreboard, it's Marion in front by five, six to one with the first two quarters in the books on the ISC Sports Network. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. Does your school offer high quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith-based environment focused on college and career exploration. Here at Marion University Preparatory School, we empower parents and help students to master what they love and learn as they live. We are now enrolling students in grades six through nine this fall. Full financial aid packages are still available. Act now to make MU Prep your school for 2022. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. It is halftime at Marion University, and it is the Knights who lead after two quarters are done and over with. Six to one is your halftime score broadcast on the ISC Sports Network today. Brought to you by MU Athletics. Get all of the up-to-the-minute information on Knights Athletics at MUKnights.com and follow us on Twitter at MU Knights. That's at MU Knights. And then also the M Club. Joining the M Club is the absolute best way to support our student athletes at Marion University. For more information, visit marion.edu slash M Club. I'm Harrison Silcox, Rachel France on the call as well. Now let's talk a little bit about that first half, Rachel. A, a lot of good stuff to say about Mary, and obviously they have the lead, and it was something we touched on in the pregame was just the, the team's depth of scoring, and that really showed in the first two quarters four different goal scorers with the six on the board. You have Kate Gray with the hat trick, but then three of her teammates as well able to kind of chime in with the scoring. So I'm just how advantageous has that been today? It's been fantastic for the Knights. I think very quickly the Saints realized Kate Gray was one to look out for. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they're going to put a little bit more pressure on her, maybe even double the ball when she has it crash in a little bit sooner when she has possession and is looking towards the cage um, to shut her down. But then we have Katie Murphy. We have Talia Newell. We have Ella Grace <laughs> coming on in there just ready to go. Something that you'll notice that Marion does when they line up on a hash um, with a left-handed shot, um, they've been having like this stack on the opposite side looking for a pass, um, which is a great way to set up your teammates for success because um, then you're not driving into a ton of pressure looking to get contact. You don't want to accidentally get, get hit, get checked, um, get any injuries. So pulling out and being ready to pass to your teammate and having them right there has been really advantageous for them. Even if they don't get the shot off, it's not a turnover. Mm -hmm. They can pull it back out, and really reset uh, before taking it in for another look. You mentioned that scoring depth. You know, when you first look at what this team has accomplished statistically to this point of the season, the big goal scorers are you've got Katie Mercy, uh, Murphy, you've got Ella Grace Geed, and then you've got Ruby Mason as well. Uh, Mason hasn't even scored in this one. Murphy's got one goal. Geed has one goal as well. So you got four other goals going into other different places mm -hmm. on this roster where it's not necessarily kind of the, the top dogs of this team offensively. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it's really allowed them – from you know, my perspective, to control that first half. Absolutely. And, and knowing that the teammates are always going to set you up for success, whether that's with a positional assist, like 
Maybe one player is cutting across to allow the player with the ball to drive in. Maybe it's a give and go. Maybe it's a draw and dump. But I think this team really gels well together as an offensive unit. Um, and that is definitely seen in how many different players are able to find the back of the net. Uh, for the Saints, uh, I do think that we definitely need to mention the play of Lucy Stedham. She had six saves oh, yeah. in this matchup last year, uh, and she's had plenty of saves here in the first half as well. She's been under pressure a lot, uh, but you know, given the amount of shots she's faced, uh, she's handled it well. She's had a lot of big saves as well. It, absolutely, and Sienna Heights is is really working to shut down the Knights offense offense just by putting a lot of pressure on once they get into the eight you'll notice they sit back on the eight and kind of wait for the knights to engage <laughs> their offense um, and they're able to crash in really quickly get a lot of sticks in the way um, and i'm sure that also helps out their goalie making sure those shots don't have as much power maybe they're deflected by a defender the goalie is able to pick it up or their defense is just having some fantastic communication so the goalie knows exactly where the ball is coming from Halftime score, 6-1, to one, Marion in front. Back after this on the ISC Sports Network. Pepsi's always had great taste. Today, try great taste with zero sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account at IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. Let's take a look at some first half highlights as it was Kate Gray who got the scoring started for Mary. And that was the first of her three in the first quarter alone, Rachel. Yeah, a very quick feed from Ella Grace. Quick lefty shot uh, from Kate Gray for her second shot. Ella Grace with another shot there, faking high, going low, able to bait the goalie out. This is the one goal that the Saints have. It was Jenna Alley in a free position where she's feasted this year. That was her 10th free position goal on the season. That's another 1-0 for the Knights. And it was Kate Gray who took a stick check on the shot to get the goal there, and that's a good save from Katie Jones. She made a couple good stops there in the first half, and... Nice catch and shoot, the one goal for Murphy there. A lot of assists from this Marion team right now, setting each other up for success. A lefty drive from Talea Newell nice. to finish off the scoring. A good individual play there. That was the last goal we saw of the first half. And we will have the third quarter for you after this. It's the Knights by five on the ISC Sports Network. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. Well, fans, a little bit bundled up today. It is a little bit chilly here in central Indiana, but the Knights' sticks were hot there in the first half. They've scored six defensively, just allowing the one uh, Rachel, as we get ready for the second half here, what does Mary need to do just to make sure that they can 
You secure this one, uh, obviously in full control there through the first two quarters, but still a little bit of work left to be done here in the second half. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think this team needs to stay poised and calm, especially on the defensive end and in transition, just knowing how um, physical the Saints can play as offense. They're not, they're not afraid of contact. They're willing to drive in. They're willing to get engage the defense um, and push through a couple of defenders to find that open shot. So Marion's got to make sure that they stay poised and calm and not committing any fouls in that defensive zone. So it is Emily Pringle for the Saints who is hanging out at the draw circle as Sienna Heights, they've got their players out of the field. They're ready to go. Knights are in the process of doing exactly the same. Madeline Dumke has been at the draw circle all day today for the Knights. Her and Pringle have met uh, plenty of times through the first two quarters of this one, and it'll be those two once again to start the third This one knocked high in the air. And Gray is going to get her stick underneath it. And it is Marion who will set up first here in the second half on offense. So Geed quickly surveying from behind the goal. No options there. She gives off to Murphy. Looks like Marion's trying to burn off a little bit of time from that clock. No need to press when you have a little bit of cushion on those, the goal. We mentioned a few times, Rachel, in the first half, just how back and forth and frantic the pace could get at times there in the first. So got to imagine save some legs a little bit by just working the shot clock here with just over 40 seconds on the possession. Absolutely. Ball moves faster than your feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to change. So this is great with the ball. From well outside as she starts to step in, tries to put on a little bit of shake and bake as she passes it off. And now the bounce shot from her twin sister goes home and she's got four. Another lefty shot from Kate Gray. That's got to be a special connection, getting that feed from your twin sister, able to find the back of the net. So it is good work from Mary. And as you mentioned, you see the lefty shot right there and good shot placements as well. How hard is that for goalies to, to track a bounce shot? <sighs> bounce shots are so unpredictable, even on turf. It's very hard to track, and I think having that shot go to her off stick side, that went towards her like left shin, left knee area, that's really hard to get your stick over in that region, and you got to move your feet, which the goalie definitely did, but Kate Gray was able to sneak that goal right past her. So the lefty shot, that's the offhand, but some great shot placement there as well, just under 14 left to play here in the third as we go back to midfield. And it is a draw control won by Gray. It was checked free of her stick, though. It's good work by Sophia Bow, and she'll run the other way with it. Geed is working hard on the ride to try and force a turnover, but Bow just navigating through three, four defenders. A tough pass out of it. Will it stay in play? Just on that near sideline, it will be kept in play. Good work by Kalia Brown to slow that ball down from going out. And she'll throw it back behind the goal. So Saints looking for their first goal since the first quarter. Fantastic work on that transition. Being able to weave in and out of three to four players. That takes a lot of skill, a lot of ball control. You can tell that they've been putting a lot of work in that in practice. Well, it winds up being a short possession as Gray turns off the ground ball and... Now a chance to run and stretch the legs for the Knights. As Geed waits the last minute to get the pass off to Mason and a great save by Stedham. How many times have we mentioned Stedham's name after making a huge stop today? That was one of them as Porchetta surveys upfield. A lot of great clearing opportunities from the Saints here as well. Said I'm able to find her teammates really quickly. She's got 10 seconds in that crease before she's got to leave it, but she doesn't seem to need much time to find her teammates. Pringle with the ball here is 
She works to her left. Pressure comes from tonight's defensively, so it's shuffled back out to Alley. Through traffic and a whistle on the way, this might be Alley earning herself another trip to that eight-meter fan. And a prime hash for a right-handed player here. She's going to look for an opportunity for her stick to be closer to the middle of the cage, middle of the eight meter. So that's going to be an ideal hash for Jenna Alley. She's got 10 free position goals on the season. As right before we were about to get set to go, all three officials are going to huddle up here. This last time we saw this, Rachel, it was a shot clock issue. I'm not sure if it's the same problem this time around as they break huddle. We're about ready to go. Saints looking for their first goal since the first frame of play. It was Allie who scored then. And it's Allie who's denied. Is Katie Joe just tracked the shot all the way. The ground ball comes into her crease. But a call from the official is going to keep it with the Saints. So a tough break for Marion with 11.20 here left in the quarter. A great eight-meter eight take from Jenna Alley, though. She's so quick off of that line, and that, that is what is key. And it looks like they're going to get another opportunity from Emily Pringle. And this time it'll be Pringle, and we'll see if the Saints can cash in from here. Pringle hesitates, and all three Knights, you see, are able to get in front of the ball carrier, so it goes back out to Alley. A lot of pressure from the Knights here. You'll notice they're putting pressure up top, outside of the 12, still on those top players. So Pringle and Alley, the two highest point scorers for this team, play some pass and catch as Alley gets knocked down once again. Looks like a push call on Katie Murphy. We're on Maddie Dumkey. Center hash. So this is where Allie scored from the opening quarter. And that time it might have been Katie Joe who got another piece making the stop there. Possession will be kept with Sienna Heights. An absolute rocket from Jenna Alley in the center hash. It's a long possession here for the Saints. you got to imagine there's some tired legs out of the field for the Knights as Allie had it checked free. She got the ball right back. Dumkey with the matchup there. This time a look inside. The pass goes awry. It was deflected on the way there and then into the stick of Katie Joe. And now on the clear is Marion. And that was a lengthy possession defensively. And Katie Joe, they may have, might not have gotten through that possession unscathed if not for her work in goal. And now she'll heave a full field pass and it leaks through finding Geed. It's a high risk pass on the clear. It might pay off as Geed's got space to run. The shot is closed off. She'll back back out and find a cutter inside. Shot from Gray goes just wide right. Great work from the Saints defense there. Pushing Ella Grace out to the side, not giving her any access to that eight meter. The Knights pulling it wide again, playing very, very high on that right side. And the stick of Farkas now. She works around Geed, and Farkas not able to get that shot off. Now she tries to feed inside. Ground ball is going to come all the way into the stick of Alley. And she's got wheels the other way. A quick transition from the Saints. That was probably our fastest transition of the day. There's been so much pressure in that midfield. So an awkward pass. It should stay in play. Allie's going to be the player for the Saints who chases it down. 65 seconds left on the possession here. Eight and a half left here in the third quarter. It's a good feed from Allie. It goes out to Holland, but Katie Jones come alive here in the third quarter with another save. Pass up ahead to Geed. When the Knights have numbers in transition, Keat is closed off. Now out to that far side of the field. It's 
So Marion now, it looked like there might have been a transition or an opportunity in transition. Instead, now they're going to slow this game down, eat up some time on the clock, 50 seconds on the shot clock. As Gray, she's scored plenty of times already today. The Dodge is closed off nicely defensively by Sienna Heights. It's, it's going to be thrown back behind to Mason now. Give and go action with Geed, but it's not quite accurate on the shot as the ball goes into the stick of Stedham, who will set up the clear. Again with that pressure on the goalie from the Knights. It's a tough pass from Porchetta. It's able to be kept when in favor of the Saints by Brown. Here's that high-pressure transition that we've been seeing all day from both teams. And that's Bacho who's having to scrap through a double team as a call goes against the Knights. Looks like a holding call on the Knights there. A check that just was held a little bit too long. That pass goes out of play. Into the sand. It's, it's spring break time. That's, <laughs> yeah. you know, you could call that a beach in Indiana. Sure. Nonetheless, it's a turnover for Sienna Heights, and here on the clear are the Marion Knights, and up ahead to Geed. As they finish off that clear, and a chance for Marion to just settle into another possession, leading by six. Yeah, the Saints all stacked up, ready for that, that defensive set. Marion did not have numbers for that. Each team's got three opportunities. They've got the fast break right away, maybe the one pass or just driving in. They've got the slow break, one or two passes. And then they've got the settled play, which it looks like what the Knights are hoping to score off of this time around. Yeah, settling into the possession. Knights also should mention they're settling into their conference season as well. They're 2-0 and in conference play out of the whack. And their third game here, and look at that spectacular on the catch and shoot right into the stick of Ruby Mason. A beautiful goal from Ruby Mason. That high school connection, Ella Grace to Ruby, they, they know. They know where each <laughs> other is going to be here. They know the style. They know where they like to be fed. They know how they like to shoot. You can see them embracing each other. And, and on the last shot, uh, on the last goal that we saw for the Knights, it was a bounce shot that went through from Kate Gray. Uh, and that time around, talk about the quick stick and how hard is it for a goalie to track that when the ball is in and out of that stick in a blink of an eye. Oh, yeah. I mean, goalies are often, often trained to track the stick, right? We're looking for a fake. We're looking for the ball to come out. But Ruby Mason was really close to the cage, close to the crease. The ball moved quickly from down low to the front of the cage. And that means the goalie has to shift her position and have her stick up and try to follow that ball. It's a lot to ask for a goalie. All the more impressive uh, with how good Lucy Stedham has been today is this ball is going to wind up in the stick of Ashlyn Gray. So she's off in the other direction. This Gray is able to avoid some pressure and Mentioning the conference play for the Knights just before that goal was scored. So they're 2-0 and in the WAC. This is their third conference game of the year as Marion comes into this one early in conference season. On top of the conference as far as the standings go. This first conference game of the year for the Saints. So it's a, a tough way to, to start your conference play, Rachel, to, to come on the road, play against a team, like Marion, they've won their last two, a uh, program that's really feeling like it's building towards something with all that experience they have. Oh, absolutely. Like being a younger team, they have less experience in that conference. They're not as used to the style of play. And that's Murphy getting her second today and a great feed from Ashlyn Gray who had the assist. So it's that experience we talk about. Murphy and a graduate year, that Butler transfer, getting on the, her, her second goal today the there. A quick feed, a quick look to the cage. You'll notice she had to get 180 degrees from facing Ashlyn all the way over to facing the cage to get that shot off. And so the Knights beginning to roll now, leading by eight. Have not allowed a goal since the first quarter of play and back to the draw circle. This is a fierce conference. 
the WAC is a very, very intense conference. They've got a lot of tough competition. So open up conference play is definitely tough when you're a younger team. Marion has that experience, is able to be a little bit more confident going into that, being ranked high in the NAIA polls. Latest poll, Marion ninth in the country. That came out midweek is Ashlyn Gray, who just had the assist. It was one-fifth year to another from Gray to Murphy, and it's Gray who starts this possession here as we're just under 80 on the shot clock. Slowing it down, taking their time. So Smart not to find that first opportunity, but to find the best opportunity. From If you dive into the perspective of, of Ali Sork's need, what do you think the message is to her players in a, in a game like this where they're winning draw controls, they're, they're finding their cutters on offense, they're obviously putting goals up on the board. So, so what is the message when games get like this is Murphy puts a nice shot on Cage with a, a better save from Stidham there. So you know, how, how do you think you play this one out uh, if you're married? I think it all boils down to control and maintaining composure. I know they're looking to spread the goal love and find those the best opportunities. It's not always going to be from one player. So how do we make sure we're really looking for the best opportunity and setting up our teammates for success? I know Allie Storks need does a great job of encouraging her players. You can see her very excited over on the sideline. Um, <laughs> smacky in her knees, <laughs> getting very into the game, <laughs> um, but encouraging her players to stay controlled and to be very, very patient, especially with a defense that is as strong and active as the Saints. That was Gray who tried to float another pass into Murphy as the shot clock dwindles down on that possession there late. Now some tough work on the clear, and it's Kate Gray who got knocked to the ground there. And I wonder if we're going to see a card here. And what color? It's yellow. Looks like we're going to have a woman up opportunity for the Knights. So Sophia Bow, who winds up getting tagged with the yellow card. So 9-1, to one, Marion with the eight-goal lead. They go woman up here for two minutes with two minutes and 49 seconds left in the third. The refs, again, just making sure players are staying safe. Just kind of deciding if that's going to be a green card or a yellow card based on their angle. There are three refs, but they all have different things to look out for and different things to call. So it really is up to the ref that is in the line of sight of that foul. And compared to the first half so far, it's... Been a little bit more controlled, Rachel. I feel like we've seen less turnovers as Murphy tries the low-to-low -low shot. I feel like we've seen less turnovers. Uh, Marion's really dictating the pace of the game, but also um, the amounts of fouls we've seen. We, we saw a lot of cards there in that first half. I, I, I feel like that's slowed up a little bit here Absolutely. in this third quarter. And I think some of that is figuring out what the refs are going to call. Every ref, we talked about this earlier, It's sometimes it's subjective. Mm -hmm. So how, how physical are the refs going to allow the play? Um, and sometimes just getting out those early game jitters. The first quarter is inevitably going to be a little bit messier. That is Mason getting her second goal of the day. Both of those coming here in the second half. It's a uh, seven goal run, by the way, for the Knights. That looked like an Ella Grace assist as well. That high school connection, a very quick shot from Ruby Mason there. And High School Connection is alive and well with a minute and 45 seconds left to play here in the third quarter. Marion in full control, trying to make it three straight wins and move up to five and three on the season. In that little post goal huddle, you could also see some of the more experienced players teaching some of the younger players, which I think is a huge advantage that Marion has going into the rest of their season. They have essentially a bunch of mini coaches out there. Yeah. And one of those younger players is Ruby Mason, just a sophomore, but came into this one with 22 points on the season. She was one of those returning scorers 
from last year, as you mentioned, four of the top five players in the pregame uh, in terms of scoring on this Marion offense came back this year, and then they added Katie Murphy into the mix. So it's kind of pick your poison offensively if you're Allie Storks need. Right now, though, it's Sienna who's trying to clear the ball, but a relentless ride. That was Tori Farkas. Another one of those younger players, the sophomore, who is just creating some havoc there and forcing that turnover. Absolutely. She does great work for the Knights in the midfield there. A very, very high-pressure ride is able to find her teammates really quickly um, once she does have the ball as well. A chance to hold for the last shot unless Mason can get a good look on Cage here. The bounce shot goes. Stedham makes the save. As Holland comes away with the ground ball, so right back on the clear go the Saints. It was interesting there, Rachel. We could have seen Marion hold for the last shot, uh, but they opted to go a little bit more higher tempo on that possession. As Mason, uh, to her credit, did have a good look on Cage. I mean, the reality is in women's lacrosse, in, in any lacrosse, a nine-goal lead is can go away. <laughs> they have a whole quarter to play, and I think that also probably has Allie Stork's need looking to continue to push um, to – maintain that lead as much as possible going into this fourth quarter. This is Pringle from behind the goal as she passes to the middle of the field. She tried to find, I believe that was Abby Scott in front who just couldn't quite connect on the pass as this ball rolls right back out to Pringle. Another fed forced inside this ground ball bouncing off a post, but I believe we had the quarter ending anyways. And it wouldn't have mattered had it gone through. So heading into the fourth, it's Marion by nine as Kate Gray and her teammates having a good time at their home field. Fourth quarter's next on the ISC Sports Network. This is the Pepsi for America's best barbecue. Worthy of 100-mile detours and 1,000 likes. Looks good. This is the Pepsi for mopping, dipping, and dousing. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? Best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Marion University is like a home to me. Campus is where I made friends that I know will last a lifetime. Academics, sports, or arts, Marion's got something for you. Plus, downtown Indy is just 10 minutes away from campus. I'm a huge sports fan. Living in Indy, I've got the Knights, the Colts, and the Pacers. Applying was so fast and easy. I went to Marion for the education, but what I took away was the experience. Marion University offers an exceptional education and an unforgettable experience. Apply today for full scholarship consideration at marion.edu. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Just about ready for quarter number four. It's Marion in front 10 to 1 on a chilly and windy day here in central Indiana. But we're always going to find ways to have fun at the ISC Sports Network. I'm Harrison <laughs> Silcox. Rachel France with me on the broadcast. And to Rachel, we have not seen Sienna Heights score since the first quarter. We've talked a lot about the Marion offense today. Mm -hmm. uh, but defensively, when they have been tested a little bit, how well have they responded here today? The Marion Knights? Yes. They have been doing a fantastic job defensively. You'll notice that they kind of have a zone hybrid defense where they'll high pressure in some zones but not in the other rarely do you see them get sucked out kind of on those elbow plays but the saints tend to drive from up top they have really really strong midfielders who are able to make those strong drives from the top of the eight so you'll see marion put a little bit of pressure up top there i think in in between the pipes for the knights katie joe has been doing a fantastic job it looks like grace coin is actually subbing in here for katie joe um, to give her a little bit of a rest and, and continue to make some fantastic stops. Well, Grace Coyne, she's made seven stops on the season. We'll see if she'll get a chance to make a couple more here in the fourth with Marion leading by nine.
So Ashlyn Gray, who's been all over the ball on these draw controls this afternoon, is able to get one there. So it's the first offensive possession of the quarter going in favor of the Knights. This is Mason, who had a couple of goals in the third. And finding Gray to score. Make it five for Kate Gray. A lot of patience from Ruby Mason there. You saw her make several fakes looking for an open player, and Kate was able to get a hand on it. I'm pretty sure all of her goals have been lefty so <laughs> far today. That's said versatility, been able to use both your hands, and it pays off. Uh, Kate Gray, two goals on the season coming to this one, and all of a sudden she's got five today. It's been a productive day for the fifth year. Absolutely. It's a 10-goal lead. The clock will run here in women's lacrosse as we go back to the draw circle. Dumpke and Pringle at midfield once again. I believe they've taken all of the draws here in this second half. As we saw Jenna Alley take a couple draws early for the Saints. Dumpke's been out there just about the entire day for Marion as this loose ball chased down by Sophia Bow, but that pressure is going to continue from the Knights, and it might pay off here as Geed winds up with the ground ball. Those draws have really been going 50-50, it seems like. There's just been so much turning over of the ball in that midfield. Even if one team comes up with it consistently, the other team is right there with very active sticks, good body pressure, ready to look for that turnover. So Mason, who just had an assist, gives the ball off over to Farkas as the Knights will set up offensively. So they've got the 10-goal lead and, and rules women's lacrosse. You've got the running clock. What do you think now is the approach from Mary and Rachel? Do you think that they're going to opt for a more, more patience on offense? Is kind of what we've seen for them most of the time, second half anyways? I, I would imagine so. It seems like, especially when they're spreading things out, they might look to, to set up maybe a little bit more strategic plays that run the clock. Just so, again, they're, they're not having to run back and forth. But we see a great turnover by the Saints here um, as they head in the other direction. And this is Bacho rolling back behind her as the quick ball movement from the Saints is able to help out on the clear as Turner trying to get into her attacking zone and does just that as Kate Gray will continue to pressure and pass gets out to Kaylee Brown. So here's Alley with the ball, the lone goal scorer for the Saints this afternoon. Look inside, trying to find a Pringle, and Pringle's down on the turf, and play is going to be stopped as well. Looks like we're going to have a call here against the Knights. I don't think that's going to be a call. I think, I think they were just making sure she was okay here, I'm wondering if any ref saw anything dangerous or if they looked clean from their end. Well, in that case, good defense from Marion. Is, this is Farkas with the ball on the far side of the field. So just like that, the Knights back with the ball on offense. We've seen a lot of offensive um, plays from the top of the 8 and the 12 from both teams today. Looks like the Knights are kind of trying to switch that up, maybe run some plays from behind, as opposed to just attacking from that top angle. This is Murphy to her left, and finding Gray on the catch and shoots, and Rachel, the assisted goals today is Ashlyn Gray gets her first of the afternoon. Uh, it, Marion's just done a fantastic job. It was something that we mentioned in the pregame as well, how good this team is as, as far as their ball movement is concerned and finding teammates. And you're really starting to see it here in the second half. Absolutely. That pass was spot on from Katie Murphy towards Ashlyn Gray. She was able to make a quick fake and then find the back of the net. Um, you can tell they practiced that many, many times. That's muscle memory right there. That's not just luck. That is muscle memory. They've done that a thousand times to get that right. That's nine straight goals for Marion as they look to see this one out and will make it three straight wins. They've reached double digits on the scoreboard in every single game of this season except for one. That was earlier in this year against Missouri Baptist as 
Draw control is one. It's Riley Bozeman who came away with it. It's Alex Dean now is looks like Mary and Rachel is starting to use some of that depth they have on their roster late in this one. Well in control, leading by 11. Absolutely. Got to get more players in. Again, to build that muscle memory, you want to be able to find each of your teammates. It's Emily Blackburn, one of the fresh pair of fresh legs who's come out of the field here for the Knights who gave it off to Geed as ball rotation starts here on the possession with nine and a half left to play in the fourth. 50 seconds on the shot clock to Leah Newell who scored a nice goal here in the third. And that's going to wind up just being a tough turnover there, Rachel. Not everyone is going to catch the ball every <laughs> single time. That's part of lacrosse. We play this sport that we have to catch this tiny lacrosse ball a meter away from our body. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. Sometimes the, the hand-eye coordination, it can betray you. <laughs> you think you have it, and you don't. This it's a humbling sport. <laughs> Audrey Scott, who rotates out of some pressure and Passes ahead to Fuentes, who's able to finish off the clear. She's been doing a fantastic job on that transition. Able to get the ball into a safe area of the attacking zone in order to set up. We see that Saints offense from the top again. Really looking to drive from those clear lanes up at the top of the eight. So Marion allowing on average, or goals against average, just 10 coming into this game. That was fourth best in the WAC. This will help out their average today. As the Saints are trying to find their second goal of the afternoon. And they'll find it. It's a great ball movement. It winds up in the stick of Danielle Turner right in front of the crease, and that ends... The nine-goal scoring run as Turner, a freshman, is able to score here to make it 12-2. to two. A beautiful feed from down low. Looks like that. Holland, again, she's been everywhere today. Also able to find her teammates really quickly. And some great ball movement from Turner. Holland, a sophomore who had a goal and an assist when she played Mary last year, getting the assist there. And a uh, little bit of a smile as well from Danielle <laughs> Turner. It's the freshman able to get one by the number nine team in the country. Cuts that lead down to 10. You got to be happy about that one. That was just pretty ball movement. And it was, and, and it paid off with a goal there. And, and to Sienna Heights credit, Rachel, we've seen that before. Mm -hmm. and, but Katie Joe really throughout this game, uh, she's not playing here in the fourth quarter, but She's made a couple of those stops right on the doorstep on some of those good Absolutely. looks that, that Sienna Heights is able to manufacture. Yeah, and I think it's it says a lot that the Saints are able to continue to get right smack dab on that top of the crease. I think with the Knights defense playing such high pressure up, it is harder to crash when there is a danger near the crease, um, and that kind of gives them some exposure um, for goal-scoring opportunities for the Saints. That's Turner, who was under some pressure but was able to find a Pringle on the outlet. And now this is Allie as she finds Brown and a whistle is blown from the officials. Looks like that was a shooting space call on the Knights. Again, someone was in her shooting path, um, putting themselves in danger, which is a call on the defense. So Brown steps out, elects not to shoot and goes back to Allie. Ashlyn Gray defending as Allie runs into a double team. She finds the open player. And Brown, and it's another free position. So Again. here of late, you're seeing the Siena Heights, some good ball movement paying off. Absolutely. This is a game all about momentum. As soon as you score a goal, you want to capitalize on that momentum and continue to put things into the back of the net. Exactly what they're going to do here. And that cuts it down to nine as Kaylee Brown gets her first goal of the day. And consecutive goals scored for the first time today from the Saints. They had gone goalless for... A couple of quarters, they hadn't seen one in the back of the net since the first, but here's their third of the afternoon. Yeah, she got that quick, quick stick, quick goal off of by getting that center of the face shot. You'll notice she brought her stick 
directly to the middle of her body. That's really hard for the goalie to track. She was able to either push it to the right or to the left, direct it um, without uh, the Knights goalie making that stop. That is a sophomore getting a goal today of a pair of sophomores who have scored and a freshman as well. We've been talking about the youth of this team all day. You see the potential there as the Saints are able to find a little bit of momentum here with five and a half left in the fourth. Back to the draw circle. We'll see if Siena Heights can continue to build in some momentum as that ball was skied in the air, but the draw control is going to go to Riley Bozeman who passes ahead to Gray. And so a chance to just settle up a little bit more once again here for Marion. Find a little bit more control on the pace of this game. Here's Mason from behind the goal. She feeds a pass inside. It bounces out to Gray. And a free possession coming up for the Knights. Another shooting space call, that big pump fake, looking to see if there's any defender in her path that the refs would then put behind her for that eight meter shot. Gray will shoot and a couple of stick checks thrown in there. It's good work from Jenna Alley. She was one of the players to get a stick in the shooting lane, Ava Holland as well. Uh, two players who've really been all over the field today. Rachel, you've mentioned it a couple times. Absolutely. They're very active. Doesn't seem like they're getting tired. Not sure exactly how. They've been doing quite a bit of running. <laughs> but they're able to stay fresh um, and keep that first step really quick. They were able to get a stick off of it, which is hard, especially um, with a fast player like Gray on the hash. This is Brown helping finish off the clear over to Abby Scott. That high-pressure defense way out past the 12. Allie weaving through traffic. Bounce shot just over the crossbar. I think in terms of isolation, she might be one of the best players on the field this afternoon. She's a fantastic dodger. Somehow she keeps the ball in her stick, weaving through several players. That is really, really hard to do, especially when you're experiencing pressure all the way up at the 20 or just past the 12. That's a lot of contact to handle as you're trying to make your way towards the cage. This is Scott with the ball now. As she'll roll back and find Pringle. She's been quiet today. But that shot goes, and it's three straight for the Saints. A low angle shot, too. She made it all the way towards the elbow before taking that look, but was able to get a nice bounce shot into the cage. So Emily Pringle, one of the more experienced players on this team, the senior gets her first goal today. You'll notice even with body contact from the Knights defense, she was still able to get her stick free. That's something you'll hear coaches talk about often. Get your hands free, get your hands free, get your stick free. And Emily Pringle did exactly that. So now a change in the draw circle for the Saints, it's Jenna Alley who will return. She was there a few times in the first half. As Madeline Dumpke will remain the draw taker for Marion. Another alternating possession. Looks like both of them may have moved at the same time, and that's going to go to the Knights. So a tough break for the Saints, who really have won this fourth quarter. A lot of momentum from the Saints right now. Hoping they can get that from the defense and bring it back to offense again. So it's 3-2 if you're keeping score here in the fourth frame. Is the Knights will keep possession and it's might a be a push free call. position. They're going to be a push on the Saints. Looks like another, looks like Kate Gray on the hash again. She's got that righty angle. But you'll notice her teammates are all stacked on that other side looking for pass opportunities. And it's that righty shot. It goes just over the crossbar. Gray's been very accurate and effective with the left hand today as that righty shot goes wide. And Saints had the backup. So just under three minutes left to play the fourth. Here they come on the clear. More high pressure on the ride from the Knights. Going to make it very hard for the Saints to get it into their attacking end. The ball is still 50-50 here. And Porchetta is able to come away with it as her and Gede dueled for that ground ball. 
And on the quick reset, Porchetta throws ahead. As Turner is able to pump the brakes to get around two players and give off to Alley. You have to admit that Sienna Heights, Rachel, has handled this pressure that Marion's put on them on the clear better as this game's continue to go on. Absolutely. They have been doing a great job of protecting their sticks. You'll notice they cradle just between their shoulders, making sure that there is no possible way that a legal check is going to come. Um, in women's lacrosse, that check cannot come through their sphere. Each player's got like an astronaut bubble <laughs> around their head, <laughs> and no stick can come in, the, in that space. Um, so they do a really good job of protecting the ball. You see that close cradle from both of those Saints players, and they're going to get the call. Looks like a some little bit of physical contact in that middle zone. So failed clear for Mary and will give the ball back to the Saints. And a green card for the Knights. That's going to be called on Kate Gray as well. So woman up opportunity coming up here for the Saints for a minute with 137 left to play in the fourth quarter. You'll notice that the clock has gone back to stop time. They are within only eight goal difference. This is Pringle surveying from up top. You see a lot of players active off ball for Sienna Heights, and it's Alley who somehow gets through all sorts of stick checks to get that shot off. Ground ball rolls all the way back out to Pringle. She's a wizard. I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> the answer. She is a wizard, and somehow the ball is able to stay in her stick with uh, so much defensive pressure. That's amazing ball work from Jenna Alley. That time it was in and out of the wands of Alley here is what led to the ground ball in the middle of the field. A call goes against Mary, and so Saints will continue to try and put on some pressure here in the fourth as it's been a very respectable effort here in the fourth quarter as well for a team that was down big on the scoreboard has really found a way to come alive here late with a lot of young talent on their team, Rachel. Absolutely. A lot of contact here in the midfield still, but the Saints not letting that deter them from continue to push. So it's going to be a green card. A couple of green cards here in the final 90-ish seconds of play. So you we're waiting for play to restart here with 27 left of the fourth. You got to admire the hustle from both teams here. Neither team has let the gas, um, lifted their foot off the gas, right? They've been pushing and pushing, making sure they are continuing to work hard for their teammates um, and not let any plays go without 100% effort. See a big effort from the Saints here to try to get that turnover as well. So the clear is finished off here. Marion has a chance they get this ground ball. They can just... Let the clock wind out. Instead, you mentioned keep that foot on the gas pedal, and it's one more save for Stedham in the afternoon, denying Mason right in front. And now Stedham can let this clock run out as the Knights are going to come away victors. 12-4 to four will be your final score. And what was a very good game for Marion as they make it three straights. They'll move to five and three on the year for the Saints. They'll fall to three and four as Marion also makes it 3-0 and in conference play. One more time, I'm Harrison Silcox, Rachel France alongside me in the press box, and also thank you to everybody on the crew with the ISC Sports Network this afternoon. We'll close up shop here today, 12-4, to your final. It's Marion who walks away as winners. You've been watching Marion's Women's Lacrosse on the ISC Sports Network. sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi.